Hi guys, hello and welcome back to yet another video on my Chanel, also known as Channel. Before I get into the video, make sure to be a bay and leave me a big fat thumbs up down below and smash that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified every single time I post a brand new video and every time you do, I become sexually aroused. What can I say? Now, before I do any mammoth study day, I tend to go for a run or work out. I just find that it clears my head and it gets my brain like pumping, ready to go and ready to absorb all of the knowledge that I intend to during the day. Honestly, you guys, it's like minus five. I feel like my dick is gonna fall off. But that was worth it. <laughs> this view is really good, but Jesus Christ, it's freezing. Why was my bloody voice so deep? Uh, we will never know. Anyway, so I got back from my run and I hopped in the shower. Now, apologies, mother. The shot was <laughs> a lot lower than I hoped, so I cropped it as to not be seen like a total hoe, um, as opposed to just a classy hoe. So then I followed my normal morning routine. I made some breakfast, which I have gluten-free oatmeal and banana every morning. It's just glorious. Um, and I wrote out my to-do list for the day. I find that writing out a to-do list first thing in the morning is actually the best way to stay organized and just crack out everything that I want to do in the day because literally my day is chronologically ordered on this to-do list. Like everything I need to do is there. And just to give you guys an idea of what is usually on my to-do list, for example, this particular day, um, I had to complete my study abroad research for my application to study abroad next semester and um, I had to plan a mediation and representation essay for my course so then I made myself some fresh lemon water before heading off for my 9am lecture and um, this particular lecture was for the analyzing moving image text module of my course um, and this particular lecture was on the rise of UK television and um, though it was one of those lectures where you don't actually need to make notes because it was just the lecturer was giving verbal context and very basic rundowns of the rise of UK television which I kind of knew from a level before and I still got notes from that and um, so I just didn't need to make any specific notes for that which actually helped me out a lot because it freed up a lot of my study time to write up other notes and to catch up with the lecture that I missed beforehand. After that I got back at 10 a.m. and I had to catch up first of all on a lecture that I missed the week before because I was in London and this lecture was on globalization so kind of how the world has become one nation if you like and the spread of new technologies and media and cultural adoptions and all those sorts of fun things um, but it was actually quite interesting. <laughs> so after I clenched my thirst and rehydrated, I printed out all of my notes, which I tend to do after every single lecture. Um, and just before filing them away, which I tend to do by module and chronologically, I just read over it to make sure that it actually makes sense and that I haven't missed anything out. And also just so that the knowledge sticks in my head because it's all well and good typing up these notes, but if it doesn't stay in your head, then it's pointless. Bueno. So I'm not gonna lie, last semester I really enjoyed the mediation and representation part of my course. Like, I found it really interesting, but this semester, like, <laughs> I just have no fucking clue what goes on in those lectures. University exhausts me. So then it was time to head off to my 11 a.m. seminar. Now, if you know me, you know I hate seminars. I generally think they're pointless. I don't really feel they're necessary. Um, but nonetheless, it was for my mediation and representation module of my course. Um, and unfortunately, the lecturer didn't let me film. And I was like, what? Like, we're only discussing the bloody essay and photography sis. Uh, the seminar was okay, there was good discussion, but again, I just feel like it wastes my time. I don't really, I feel like I'm the only one that speaks in the bloody seminars, um, so nonetheless it was okay. But I got some notes and we kind of discussed more about the lecture. So for lunch, I have the same thing every single day. I have salad, I cook some bacon with it, which is actually cooked in lactose-free butter, and then I have gluten-free chips with it, which I get from Tesco. They do the nicest ones. Um, it's so tasty and it's so good for me and my stomach because I have IBS, and it's just really good for my health because my stomach can't digest a lot of food. So then over lunch, I checked my social media, which was actually for the first time that day since waking up. I love just catching up with you guys. Um, and if you don't already follow me on social media, the links will be down in the description bar and also on the screen somewhere. Straight after lunch, I took a quick break from studying and hoovered my room. And now this is essential because of the STDs that float around student halls, so it was necessary. So then I read a chapter of um, a textbook called Understanding Audiences and the Film Industry. Now this is not actually a given text for my specific course or my degree. It's just some wider reading that I do and I find it just 
just really useful for my essays and shows that I can kind of read around the set text. So then it was time to head off to my favourite lecture of my course, which is the three hour film and TV history lecture. And this specific one was delivered by Chris O'Rourke, who is an amazing lecturer. Cheers, bitch. <laughs> Resilience. For some reason, everyone laughs at me when I contribute in a lecture, and originally I suspected this was because I look like Pennywise from It, um, but apparently it's because I shout my answers. Um, yeah, the more you know. So to give you guys an idea of how well structured and content heavy Chris's lectures are, the footage that you're watching is only from the first 20 minutes of the lecture. My memory card on my camera like <laughs> got full up or some shit midway through. Um, but I ended up leaving the lecture with about 10 pages of written notes. So Chris honestly just put so much into his lectures. This specific lecture itself was so, so interesting. It was on the history of British cinema in World War II. And y'all know I stand the UK, but I just found it so fascinating to hear about how like the British government used cinema as the medium for propaganda, specifically for women and recruiting them into the armed forces and factories. Then after the film and TV history lecture, we always watch and analyze a film. And there was a specific scene in this film where one character Character, uh, became really successful and she turned around to another who became an absolute straight hoe um, and this just drew huge parallels to my future so I just turned to my friend and said iconic and probably true Chris just said see you later and that was just me fangirling over my lecturer. Like, me and my friends have a running joke about how much we love Chris and Gabor, who are the lecturers for this module. It kind of turns me on, like, they don't, that knowledge does. <laughs> oh my god. So then it was time for dinner, and I just had some tomato soup and gluten free crackers. And weirdly, normally there are so many of my flatmates in the kitchen at the same time, but this specific night, it was just me and the three other people that I'm actually living with in a house uh, for the second half of next year. After dinner, I typed up the notes for the film and TV history lecture, and the first thing I do typically is go over the PowerPoint to make sure that I didn't miss anything or any key dates, because it's film and TV history, you know, there are so many dates that get shown to us. And typing up my notes usually takes me anywhere from an hour to two hours. It just depends on who was the lecturer that day, what the content was about, how interested I was, and how many notes that I actually took away from it. So then, just as always, I printed out my notes, I checked over them quickly to make sure, you know, they just, they made sense, and I filed them away. We're on our way to the library right now. I was originally going to go on my own, um, and then this Catherine, creature came on. this creature just hobbled along. The aim is to stay there till 5am. Um, do you think we'll do it? No. I mean, I don't think I will. You I will. will. Some friendly words of encouragement there as me and Catherine headed off to the library for our first all-nighter that we'd ever done, actually, at the library. Now, a top tip that I wanted to share with you guys as to how to avoid paying for coffee in university libraries is just to make your own. So I pre-make my coffee in a bag. Now, a lot of uni students carry similar bags with very different substances in, but that's none of my business. And I just take some boiling water in a flask, I add them together, stir it with a straw, and boom, free coffee. So the first and probably biggest project that I did that night was uh, my production planning research for the module of my course where we have to make a TV show. It's basically TV heavy. Um, a lot of the course so far for first year has been film heavy. I basically just did all in all about three and a half hours of research into children's TV. I feel like I've become a fucking expert on it now, um, but I just got so much useful information from different sources, from the internet, from textbooks on children's television and how to make a successful TV show. super random but you know when you offer someone food in the hope that they won't take it but then they do they take the piss and they grab a fucking handful <laughs> but nonetheless I went downstairs and I grabbed a textbook on children's television and um, just so I could get key quotes to use and back up my research basically 
It was just really interesting in this reading to find out different theorists' opinions of children's television and how it's basically made for adults as opposed to children and what adults want children to see. I always knew that was obvious, but it was just really interesting seeing how blatant it was that children's TV is really just made for adults rather than children. It's made for what adults think children want as opposed to what children actually want. And then I just collated all of those key quotes onto flashcards so it's easy to remember them. Then I actually started a case study on um, a CBBC show called Friday Download who actually knew someone who was going to be a presenter on that and then like she got drunk and she got a pussy out one night and nonetheless she didn't get on the children's show. I wanted to identify through this successful kids show how me and my group for production planning can recreate this um, and really make a great children's television show. So then after this study sesh I collated all of my knowledge onto one big word document and printed it a couple of days after but it was important that I got the structure right because you have to submit all of your research into one big big file that everyone gets graded for um, at the end of your unit so I had to make sure all of this research was tip top because honey I want to first and this is group work so you know it's going to be fucked. Okay. So then I headed back downstairs for a bit of a break from studying, um, just for five minutes to grab some more books and just, you know, be at one with the library. So for the film and TV history module of my degree, as well as the British cinema, which you saw in the lecture earlier, we also study Soviet cinema, Italian cinema, German cinema, French cinema, and I think Hungarian cinema, but I'm not too sure. I basically just wanted to catch up with some reading that I'd missed the week beforehand, and also get ahead in reading as well before some lectures uh, in the coming weeks. And hopefully through this video, it will actually banish a lot of people's misconceptions about studying film at university. Like, it's actually a lot of hard fucking work. Like, I don't just sit and make movies all day. I actually write a lot more essays than I make films as part of my degree. Um, it's more 75% theory and 25% practical. So it's a lot of hard work. So for the next two hours, I just read and made note of some key dates and information uh, from the different types of cinema. And I just compared and contrasted what made them different. And also, I just mapped out a general timeline of what happened in these different nations to make them change their course in film history or what gave different films different context and different political meanings and uses for propaganda etc and um, so I just thought it was really interesting and fun and the reason that I make so many notes during my reading uh, when I read textbooks is because all of this information and dates may be needed for an essay that's at the end of the semester so it's just really easy to have these notes and these key dates and pieces of information at hand but when the questions are released in case there is one to do with the specific nation or type of cinema that I'm currently researching. In that moment, my heart dropped to my booty hole because the librarian saw us and headed our way. But luckily she didn't, I headed straight back to work um, and I cracked on with my study abroad application, my essay for that and also further research that I needed to do, not only for the essay to amend it, but also for the interview process for study abroad as well. 
If you guys don't already know, I'm applying to study abroad for my first semester of year two at university, so from August till December of 2018. But a huge part of that in the exchange is a lot of research into the university and the exchange program itself. So I literally delved into, you know, the history of Minnesota. So my research even stemmed back to the fact that a former student by the name of Charles Loring, who I think became a member of the US Supreme Court for Minnesota, he rode his pony in like 1880 or something at five miles every single day to and from his lectures. Now, if you ask me, that's Fucking iconic, like that gives no one an excuse to not go to their 9am lecture. Like this motherfucker rode his pony. So I finally collated all of that information onto cue cards in preparation for the interview just to help me retain that knowledge. I took another break, I did some recycling, I grabbed another book from downstairs and I began to plan my essay for mediation and representation which I've actually chosen to do it on one of the questions on genre. The first thing I do when planning an essay is I always unpick the question. I always try and work out what it's asking of me um, and then I always try and rework it uh, in a simpler terms category and I just basically write down what the question is saying but in more simple terms and I just jot down my initial thoughts as well because nine times out of ten I can plan an essay all the way through that always goes back to what my initial thoughts and my initial reaction was. So then at like 3am you know as if you're at a sleepover Catherine and I just started chatting some sh** thinking we were like Michelle Obama being really philosophical um, but it was also kind of cute and resonated with me. You know one of the, the rarest but best qualities in a person to be honest. Yeah. Mm. You know, I just, I never want to wake up one day and be like, Dan, I wish I would have done that. I spent one more night in the library. I wish I would have read that one more textbook. I wish I would have written that essay. It's like, yeah. no, cut the bullshit. Do that stuff today. I hope that's what you guys take from this video. You know, stop putting off your studying, like start doing it today. Stop procrastinating, you know, clip down your wig and get on with your studying. So here I was just doing more research into genre as a broad uh, concept and it was just really interesting to hear what theorists thought about genre, how they defined it, what constitutes a genre and gathering really important quotes as well. Uh, that was essential, probably the most useful thing that I did that night for the essay itself. I find that in a university essay it's easiest to first research your quotes uh, to then structure your essay because you can just structure your essay around quotes seeing as that's so heavy in a university essay. Okay guys so it's 4.15 in the morning I'm getting to the point of like delusion right now there is no one left in the library Catherine has gone walk about um not the club in Lincoln uh she's literally just walking around the library. I've just got one more chapter to read from this textbook um, for the essay and I'm just going to collate the knowledge and then I am done for the 20 hour study session. I am so tired but it feels so worth it. <sighs> University exhausts me. But nonetheless I picked my heart up from my booty hole and I persisted. I gathered some key quotes and examples of genre and I went over a really cool case study actually that argued that film genre doesn't really exist and I was kind of planning to use this as my counter argument or on the other hand paragraph in my essay. It was just very interesting to hear someone else's opinion that I definitely didn't agree with about genre. Then before you know it, delirious as fuck, 5am rolled around and my 20 hour study session was complete. Be worth it one day. No rest for thee. Who wants a first class honours? Don't agree. No, I know would be shook. <laughs> Hermione Granger would be shook. <laughs> so I packed up my work, headed out of the library, and called it a wrap on my 20 hour study session, and I left feeling pretty fucking good about myself. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe and share this video. Make sure you're following me on all of my social media. The links will be in the description bar below. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you sexy people at some point next week. Thank you, and goodbye.